My guest in the studio joins us on uh, some of our Wednesdays. Uh, they have a rotation at Trip Family Medicine. Russell Singleton is a physician assistant, and he joins us in the studio this morning. And this is a continuation of a previous discussion because we really got into the meat of some of these myths about colds. And why do we talk about that this time of year? Well, some of you may already be suffering, <laughs> and the rest of us will by the time we reach February, and maybe a couple of times between now and then. But uh, first of all, welcome back. Thank you. It's great I to want to be make here. sure that that's the right microphone. Is uh, say 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 hello again. It's great to be back. Thank you for the invitation. Sounds what great. A pleasure. <laughs> yes. You know, before we make, people we, have to hear you. This is the important part of the program. <laughs> well, before we start, Bill, there actually is one important thing <laughs> that I want to say, and that's to remind our listeners about a coat drive that we're we're uh, sponsoring at Trip Family Medicine, because we're talking about cold weather today. Um, it's apparent that it's getting colder. Yes. Our garden's about done for the year. Um, we want to try and address the need for children and adults that need warm winter clothing before the snow flies. So our our goal is to is is 50 by the 15th. We want to try and wrap this up by the 15th of November. And we have a big donation box in the office at Trip Family Medicine. If you have a gently used child or adult coat, please bring it by. Uh, one cool thing that I that we're doing this year is we're having little we're including little tags, like like a like a gift, well not a gift card, but like a like a greeting card almost, to where you can include some message with the gift, with with the coat, to make it a little bit more personalized. And if you don't have any extra coats laying around, um, we, we, you would accept monetary donations. And actually, Deseret Industries across the street from us mm -hmm. has brand new coats at a at at deeply beautiful discounted furniture rates. too. I mean, they have great stuff over there. That's my favorite place to shop. But they've got some great <laughs> coats, really, and they're, and, they're, and they're brand new. So, I mean, even if if you're looking for something for your own family, check out Deseret Industries. You know, if I wanted to donate an old starter jacket, i got to make sure, though, because if it's a Seahawks fan, they wouldn't want, like, a, 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 some other team. So. That's right. you got to be careful. And, of course, Boise State Apparel is always, always appreciated. <laughs> it's true. Well, we wanted to point out uh, that this is the common cold season, too, and, and we're trying to – remind people that that cold weather does not, we brought this up before, does not cause the colds. And we, we, we ran through a number of the myths that are out there, but you have multiple ones, and these will not die. These are myths that seem to be with us almost permanently. Yeah, that's right. And, and I think, actually, Bill, we really only went through that first one last time, that you can't catch a cold by being out in the cold. Uh, we... For the last couple hundred years, we've understood the germ theory of disease, and you have to understand that the cold virus is a physical, tangible thing. It's a it's a virus, and unless you get that virus into your system through through inhalation or through some other method, you just can't catch a cold or the flu or pneumonia or bronchitis. These are all infectious diseases. So the conversation last time was about well, why is that and just to summarize, there's some there's some belief that maybe these these viruses are more stable in the winter in the colder temperatures, and so they're more they're more powerful or they're more, or they're more virulent. And we spend more time indoors, and and uh, we don't wash our hands enough. <laughs> and so today we're going to pick up on on how to prevent those colds and how to treat them. Talking about some of the popular folk remedies, the vitamin C, the zinc. The echinacea. I've got some interesting uh, statistics to share, some studies. So that's where we're going to pick up today. How do you treat a cold, and, and can you prevent a cold? Can you use vitamin C, zinc, and echinacea? We wanted to point out too, as well, uh, when we talk a little bit about or talked earlier about Trip Family Medicine, and uh, Russell gave somewhat of an indication of where they're located. There on, of course, uh, Fillmore Street, on the north end of the city. You're directly across from the the main post office. Yep. But easy to contact the office too. Yeah, 933-4400. Uh, the reason we keep rotating here on the radio show, like you mentioned, is because the clinic is still growing so fast, and we want to be able to provide same-day appointments to not only our regular family medicine patients, but people who just don't want to wait in an urgent care, who don't want to wait for hours in the ER. Come see us. Call first thing in the morning. Uh, we keep two or three providers there at any time so that so that we can cover those appointments. That's why you only see one of us every every so often. And, you know, the, you're growing so fast, I can see where that you're going to need more space. 
in that complex that you're in. I mean, I know it's busy already, but you'll have to kick out a wall or two if this keeps up. Absolutely. I don't know how much I can say or I'm authorized to say, but yeah, we're <laughs> we're growing and it's I think something's going to have to change soon because we're we're bursting at the seams. The the response in the community has been wonderful. Uh, people looking for family medicine practitioners, people who are independent, people who are family owned, people who can practice medicine the way they want, not the way the bean counters tell them to, and people who actually treat you like family. So the response has been amazing, and the trips have always been ahead of the curve, and I think that's going to continue, but I, I don't think it'll be at that, in, in our current physical location for much longer. That's my personal opinion. <laughs> Second story will be coming soon. That's right. We have about 20 minutes to go. Russell Singleton is a physician assistant. He's in studio with us. From Trip Family Medicine right here in Twin Falls. Bill Colley as well. The segment of the program is Better Health with Trip Family Medicine. Remember, life's too short not to feel good. We also want to remind you, if you'd like to talk to Russell in the next segment of the program, give us a shout, 736-0300. At 840, we have 43. We have a guest in studio with us. Russell Singleton is a physician assistant from Trip Family Medicine here in Twin Falls. And uh, we're talking common cold today and the myths about the common cold and some other things involved. You know, one of those that you brought up, because I was at a football game, I was just telling you last week uh, in Boise, and it was, a, it was a beautiful night. It didn't get very cold, but sometimes you go to a ball game, and um, it's very cold out, and people think that if they have a few nips of alcohol, um, that this is going to not only help them fight the cold off, but also, I guess, be a remedy for the common cold, too. Yeah, that, I, that's a great one, Bill. I'm glad you brought that up. I think we've all at least once in our lives seen that image of uh, St. Bernard in the yeah. Swiss Alps or something carrying a little, I don't know what you call it, a, a casket or something. In the Warner Brothers cartoon, he actually drinks a martini on his own. Yeah. Does he really? Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the thought is that alcohol warms you up. So if you're, if you're up, in the, up in the Alps or something and you're suffering from hypothermia, well, let's get some alcohol in you and, and we'll warm you up. So... Interestingly enough, uh, you are lowering your core temperature when you do that. What happens is alcohol is a vasodilator, so superficially, I, meaning the vessels uh, very near the skin surface will dilate, and you'll feel warm, but that is at the expense of your core temperature lowering. So if you want to die of hypothermia in the Swiss Alps, go ahead and find that St. Bernard and 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 take and suck it back because that'll absolutely cause a lower core temperature. The one thing that I have found that I've had the best luck with when I have a cold is a shot of NyQuil before bed. But I understand that isn't there alcohol in that too? Yeah, there is, but I I, I don't think it's very much, and it and it serves more of a I don't know. I I think it has more to do with the preparation of the product than than its medicinal effects. Because even in some children's uh, preparations there's a little bit of alcohol and it's not it, it's not obviously meant for the child as a remedy but it, it helps hold the the ingredients in in suspension and and it, it helps the preservation and keep it keep it from getting contaminated I, I think that's really what it's for none of these are actually cures though these these things that, and of course you got to hold your nose and drink that stuff I've, I've it's always rough to go down but it yeah. makes me sleep better, and it's that that a good night's sleep just helps fight off the virus, right? Yeah, absolutely. Almost all over-the-counter cold products contain some combination of maybe three or four different ingredients. You've got an antihistamine, which is basically like Benadryl or diphenhydramine is the generic name. There's another one called chlorpheniramine that we use a lot in the office. It, the old brand names were chlortrimetin, uh, chlortab. They're both first-generation antihistamines, which means they provoke a lot of uh, somnolence, it'll make you sleepy, but it does have a drying effect. So it does help kind of clear out the nose, kind of clear out some of the mucus. One of, one of my former bosses <clears throat> told me a story oh, when I was early in radio, and he, he was old enough that he remembered television from the early 1950s, but he claimed there used to be a commercial with Perry Como where Como would hold up a box of cigarettes and to promote them would tell you that if you had a cold and you smoked these cigarettes, it would help cut through everything and bring the cold to a a sooner end. And, and so we've had a lot of quack remedies out there that were even promoted uh, on television right up until, what, was 35, 40 years ago they were barred from being on TV. Yeah, I, I think I can safely say that that one's not true, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I would not recommend that to our patients. Uh, in, in 1995, the Brits did a study actually comparing 
what what alcohol and and other substances would do to core temperature. And sure enough, that it's not just theory that was borne out in 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 a scientific study that alcohol does lower your core temperature in the long run. So if you're out at that ball game, it's not necessarily a bad thing to have a drink, but you better be bundled up. Nobody drinks in the stadium. It's that crew outside that I noticed that was like, like walking through that seamy scene in uh, in a Christmas Carol. Um, <laughs> and you know, you got all these polite people inside and all of the others outside. And it's like if I only had a helicopter to get back to my parking space, I'd be fine. Got to mention it's eight forty eight. Russell Singleton is a physician assistant. He's in studio with us today from Trip Family Medicine, right here in Twin Falls. It's forty four. Bill Colley with you as well. Uh, Better health with Trip Family Medicine. Telephone number. Seven three six zero three hundred, and you have a number of other coldness you wanted to go over today too. Yeah, I mentioned. I don't know how much time we have before our break, but if we can only get into one or two more, one of the ones I wanted to specifically unpack was the supplement myth, meaning that you can take vitamin C, echinacea, zinc to either prevent and/or cure a cold. Now, I'll, I'll first say that that the evidence out there is mixed. So for every study you find that might might say that it doesn't work, you'll you might find one saying that it does, except that the overwhelming majority comes down on the side of no, these don't work. And actually, some of them can be dangerous, like zinc sprays. Uh, there's an old product called Zycam that the FTC or no, I think it was the FDA actually came out and said this can cause a temporary and maybe even permanent loss of smell and. Zinc can be toxic in higher doses. It can cause anemia. It can cause disorders in copper metabolism, cause damage to the nervous system. So not only does zinc not work really well, but it can cause some serious damage. I know that years ago there was some research that I, that I remember reading about that said a nasal spray, if you feel, some people can, I don't know how you can tell, but some people can tell early on that they may have the cold coming on. And they said that certain nasal sprays dislodged perhaps some of the virus and lessen the cold or maybe even help prevent it. Was that true? You know, I'm a big proponent of saline nasal sprays. I think it dilutes the mucus. It helps It helps you get it out. I think there's probably a, a dilution effect um, with the virus that, that is in the tissue. So if you're interested in doing a saline nasal spray or like a neti pot, I think that's a great idea, but I wouldn't put zinc up my nose. And I wouldn't waste a lot of money on vitamin C or echinacea either. There's there's absolutely no evidence for echinacea. Vitamin C is a little bit more mixed. For example, if you've got a, a young kid in daycare, i.e. a high-risk environment for catching a cold, there might be some evidence for taking a vitamin C supplement as a, a prophylactic measure. But for most of us, it just it doesn't work. And even if it does, you might get... A shorter duration, but I mean, you're not going to cure it. You're not going to prevent it. And this stuff, this supplement industry is a hundred billion dollar a year industry. Don't think that that if if you're buying or selling supplements that you're, you know, you're you're some type of uh, altruistic um, savior of the world because it's not just the pharmaceutical industry that wants to make money off of you. It's the nutraceutical industry too. When we were talking about myths, I know you had a long list. We were pointing out uh, we didn't get to all of them uh, the last visit. Uh, we do actually do have a few minutes left, so if you've got some others, uh, you might want to touch on those too. Yeah, well, I know we've talked about this in the past, maybe last year, Bill, but because the the time is right, I just want to mention a little bit about the flu shot mm -hmm. causing the flu. Um, so in a, in a nutshell, uh, just to make sure and get the message out, the flu shot cannot cause the flu. Now, the reason is, most of the time what you're being injected with is not even the flu virus. It's a recombinant vaccine, meaning we've basically built something in the lab that resembles the virus. It can't cause the flu. It's not the flu virus itself. Other times we use a killed vaccine or an inactivated vaccine, meaning we've basically decapitated the virus and it, it can't do anything except resemble the original enough to trigger an immune response. But that being said, some people do experience some pain in the arm, some redness, some swelling. They get maybe a low-grade fever, uh, headache, maybe some body aches, and they think that is the flu. And, and, and I hear that, and I, I don't want to discredit that. I, I, I know that's, that's common. But interestingly enough, 
when a, when a study was done comparing the side effects of the actual flu shot to a placebo, meaning a saline shot, there was no difference. People could not tell the difference. They couldn't tell which was, and, and, and a blinded researchers couldn't tell the difference either. So I've started to think that, well, maybe it's the body's immune system just revving up and fighting that virus and, and all those inflammatory chemicals being produced by your immune system make you feel kind of sick. I think there's truth to that. But when you look at a study like this that compares the flu shot with a placebo and no one can tell the difference in terms of side effects, I, I, I think you just have to accept the fact that the flu shot does not cause the flu and maybe doesn't even cause as many side effects as people think. So there's got to be other reasons for it. And if we have, if we have more time before a break, we can unpack, unpack those too. And it, yeah, we've got about five minutes to go. We might as well go ahead. So... Oftentimes, people wait too long. The, the flu shot typically becomes available sometime in August, and the CDC has said in the past that as soon as it becomes available, get it. Because it lasts not only for a year, but maybe even a little bit longer for a year. The, the struggle is really whether or not researchers were able to accurately predict the prevalent virus years earlier when they were preparing this vaccine, because it takes time to mass produce it. And sometimes they're wrong. I mean, a couple of years ago, it was like, man, I think it was maybe even as low as 20% efficacy or 40% efficacy. And, and and we shoot for, you know, 60 or 70% efficacy. But sometimes people wait too long and they get exposed to the real flu virus. While they're, while they're waiting for that virus or vaccine to actually take effect. Yeah, because it takes about two weeks for, for your body to develop immunity. So if you've already been exposed or you're exposed during that two-week period, it's too late. I mean, if your coworkers start coughing and hacking and you think, oh, man, I better go get my flu shot, eh, it's too late. You've probably already been exposed to it. That being said, flu sh the, the flu season really peaks in January. So there, there is still time. Get it soon. Um, but don't worry about whether or not you're actually going to get the, the flu. Because if you get the real flu, you'll know. I think the newspaper is doing a, a clinic, in fact, at CSI this weekend. But you know, I, I noticed that no matter what drugstore you go by any longer, and even some of the drugstores and the department stores and your office, any number of places people can get them. It's not like you struggle to find a place to get the shot. Yeah, not only can we give them in our office and oftentimes give them for free because it's part of your wellness benefit, but we offer a high-dose flu vaccine for those that are age 65 years and older. At that point, your body starts to become less effective at mounting an immune response, so it requires a higher dose of that antigen to stimulate a response. So you get the high dose flu shot. And that's really recommended for those that are 65 and older. And I have noticed too that, um, you know, many times that I drive by and I see the signs outside the various pharmacies, uh, the cost of getting this done is, um, you know, you, you, you'd spend more money getting your breakfast over at a couple of diners in town. Absolutely. I, if you were going to pay out of pocket, you're probably talking $25, $35. But you're likely going to get it for free. So so don't let that deter you. And and I should also mention too I've had a number of patients recently who who are maybe expecting a baby in the family or who are pregnant themselves or are expecting grandkids and they're and they're thinking, "Well, I I don't know if I should really get the shot. I don't want to I don't want to get them sick." And as much as I love them, I kind of just want to shake them a little bit and say, "Not only can you not get the flu, therefore you can't you can't spread something that you don't have, but you're actually putting them at higher risk by not getting it. Because if you get the flu as an adult, you're going to be okay, probably. But if your premature infant gets it, if mm -hmm. your 85-year-old grandmother gets it, those folks can't, can't protect themselves as well. And it's probably going to be you that gives it to them. So get vaccinated. You're the one who really needs it. I was going to say, even if you're, uh, if you're uh, somebody who's 30 and you're in great condition and you work out all the time, I've seen a lot of people laid low for a week by uh, by uh, by getting the flu, and they're just miserable while they have it. Yeah, if you remember a couple of years ago when swine flu was prevalent, it hit people hard. And I think once you've had the real flu that lasts a week to two weeks, you have a 103, 104 fever, severe body aches, headaches, exhaustion, and still all the upper respiratory stuff, the coughing, the sneezing the chest discomfort, you'll be a little bit more motivated to get it. And, and you can tell I'm very passionate. I just believe in, in 
in in preventing things that that we shouldn't have to suffer through. So. We want to thank you for coming by today, and uh, we've got about uh, 30 seconds to go. Uh, for people who'd like to get in touch with your office, number of ways they can do that. Yeah, give us a call, 933-4400. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Uh, if you're interested in supporting our coat drive, we ask you to go on Facebook and actually click the link that says that you're interested and, and, and share that post and help get it out because these coats will, uh, first of all, go to the Valley House, and there's an increased need this year. And then after that, they'll go to various other children's agencies, schools, and I, th there's just nothing better we can do this time of year than lend a helping hand to someone who, who, who needs it. I want to thank uh, Russell for coming by. And coming up next, an election special. We're going to be joined in studio by Steve Millington and Randy Staples throughout the next hour here on Top Story with Bill Colley on KLIX. 9 o'clock news from Fox is ahead.